everyone. Um, we're now going to start looking at composite images. So a composite image is just creating an image from more than one other image. Um, these don't have to be images that already exist, these can be images that you create. And we're going to try and do as much of that as possible on this one rather than just using the pen tool to death to put things together. We're going to try and create some things of our own. So we're going to start out with quite a large image. We can crop it and change its um, perspective later on. Um, I'm going to start out with 3000 by 3000. We're going to create a new layer and fill this with black. So we're going to create a overall planet type scene um, with a little bit of a reflection and displacement map. Okay, so we need our foreground color as white. Uh, sorry, the black uh, black is your foreground color, white is your background color. And we're going to add some noise. So for all the old people, this is what your TV used to look like when your channel stopped working. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add 25% um, Gaussian monochromatic. So it's most of the default settings, certainly for mine. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to apply a blur, um, a Gaussian blur to this. And we're going to make, a make it really small. You can see the default value here of 11. Um, it's gone anyway, it's gone all, all together. So if we change that back down to 3, we should be alright. If I just zoom in at 100% for you, you can see that there is there is some texture on there. So once we've done that, we're going to change the levels. We're not going to do this via image adjustments, which will be there. We're going to do it via an adjustment layer. And now we're, we're trying to do what's called non-destructive um, development. So we're trying to create it so that we can go back and take anything out as we want without you having to undo. So the values that we're going to pick on here are 0, 1 and 40. Okay. So we can see that it's obviously brought out um, quite, a, quite a decent effect. So what we're going to do now is we're going to drag this middle slider um, to the right until we get what we think be quite a good star effect so I'm going to go with that okay so we're going to flatten our image so we're going to blend all the layers into one we're going to unlock this and we're going to hide it and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a layer underneath so I will name this stars so with this layer underneath, we're going to create a radial gradient. And so the colours that we're going to look at, we're going to look sort of a, a, a purple to like a like a blue to give it that sort of um, kind of uh, galaxy effect. I don't know what that means. I just made that bit up. So if we go to our gradient tool. Um, what we have is our various types of gradients and um, this button here is a radial gradient okay so it's going to do it go circular and if we click on our gradient tool there uh, or our gradient options we are then able to change our colors so we click on this one So we're going to drag from the top, uh, from the bottom right hand corner to the top left with these colours. Um, and that really not help. So I'm going to go from here to here. And then we are going to show our stars and change the blending mode to screen. 
screen. Okay, so we get that kind of nice effect, a little bit of background colour. We're going to adjust the brightness and contrast of this bottom layer to um, to suit. So if you like it how it is, don't do this. But if you want to change it, then you should. I think it was a bit too bright, so I'm just going to bring it down a little bit. And then we should have what a, quite a nice little um, effect going on. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some land. Um, so there is a image on Google uh, Classroom, um, and it is called Horizon. So I'm going to drag that in as a new image, <coughs> and I am going to select out the uh, the mountains using the um, magic wand tool. So increase the slope, uh, tolerance definitely. Okay, so I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it into here. I'm going to free transform. I'm going to put it about two thirds of the way down. So sort of there. Okay, maybe give it a bit of a an effect like that. Push it up to the edge, and then I'm going to duplicate this just so that I don't have to go find another image of mountains. I'm going to flip it horizontally again just to give it a bit of change, and then I am going to go to transform and warp so I can actually change how these mountains look. And then go to free transform again and put these in. And then how how you do this is entirely up to you. Okay, and once we do that, we are going to control E to move those layers down, and we are going to give it a straight edge on here and just fill that with black so that we end up with a quite a nice effect on there. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up another image and this time it's the image called Trees. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag this, it's already got a transparent background, so we're going to drag this into our image we are going to bring it underneath the landscape and we are going to probably to about there free transform in fact let's do warp next so we're going to transform warp and what I want is I want this these trees to hit the landscape where there is a gap. So if you see here, there's a gap in the trees and that's where I've got it. So rather than it having this straight cut off line, what we can do is we can just select this area and delete. So once we've done that, we can double click um, onto our, in fact we'll merge it down first, so the, the, the trees and the mountains are all one way, we're going to double click, load up the layer styles and then just click colour overlay, black, so we'll fill all of those with black, we now get a nice silhouette of um, our kind of our, our horizon. So what we're going to do now is we're going to rasterize this layer to apply that layer style um, and we are going to create a new layer and this is going to be our planet. So we're going to make it much bigger than we need. 
it's sort of that size. And we're going to add some clouds. We need to make sure we've got black and white as our foreground and background colors. We're going to filter render clouds and then filter render difference clouds. This is where you create what you want. So if I go to filter menu here, <coughs> it shows you that the last filter I used is Alt, Control and F. So that's what I'm going to press. Alt, Control and F and I'm just going to repeat those difference clouds until I get something that I think looks quite good. So I'll stick with that. Okay. Um, once we've done that, we're then going to pick um, another gradient. So we're going to click on the gradient tool, and we'll go on here and just pick a different set of colours. You can have the same, but I think it would look a bit better with different ones. So we'll go from there to a slightly different blue. Okay. So if I could, with this selection still made with the planet, if I draw a gradient now, it will look like that. But if I change the uh, blending mode of the gradient to overlay, and then put it over the top of this, it should affect only one part. So it affects the light parts of the, of the clouds and not the dark, so you get this texture. Okay. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at making it a bit more 3D. So we're going to filter, distort, spherize. And we're going to do this twice. I need to make sure that it's 100%. And then we're going to filter the menu and do it again. Okay, and it gives it a much better effect. So with that done, we'll deselect and we'll drag this under the horizon. We're going to use the, the free transform tool. That's not a free transform tool. Use the free transform tool to place this where we want it. Get it so it sits nicely with that colour. Okay, we're then going to double click on it and we're going to apply an outer glow so it blends in a little bit with the, with the sky. So outer glow is near the bottom. Make sure we click on the word, not the box, so that we get the options up as well. Um, and then we're going to pick a colour. So if I pick a colour, what I want to do is I want to pick a colour that is part of the planet. So maybe that green there. Um, we're going to change the blending mode to screen. The opacity to 75. Um, we've got our colour to transparent. Um, we're going to change the size to 46. Um, and then the rest of the options we can leave as they are. Okay, so if I choose to preview, you can see we just get that little glow around the edge of the planet, which looks quite nice. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create some rings around the planet. So I'm going to create a new image for this, and it's going to be smaller, partly because we're going to make it a bit bigger and it pixelates it, which is actually for once what we want. So foreground and background colours as um, default, which is black and white. And we're going to generate some clouds onto a new layer. So I'm going to filter, render, clouds. And then we're going to twirl these, which is uh, one of the filters, one of the distort filters. So we're going to twirl. <coughs> Current value is 50. We're going to put it all the way up to its max, which is um, 999. Okay, and now I'm going to do it again. And then it's entirely up to you. We can do it a third time. Yeah, let's do it a third time. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the eraser 
So a little trick with erasing things is to have a colour underneath that you're not going to use. So like a red. Um, so that we can see exactly which bits we've erased. Um, change it to brush and we pick quite a soft brush and quite a large brush. So what, we, what the effect is here is we are going to create a bit of a donut effect and because of the way we're going to mask it and transform it, it doesn't matter if we do this by hand, in fact I think it looks better. It needs to be a little bit, again, natural. We've got the soft brush so that it doesn't you don't get any really harsh lines. Um, but we just want to create a circle. And with a much much bigger brush. So much much bigger brush we're going to turn this circle into a donut okay and then we are going to um, change the shape of the layer yeah we'll do that first so I'm going to drag this into here and I'm going to change using free transform shift now to change the perspectives so obviously we want the rings to be slightly bigger than the planet and press enter we're going to zoom in so that we can see the next step and what it does so what we're going to do is we're going to add noise to this layer now and it's going to turn it from looking like it's just lines to actually looking like it's made out of particles. And the value that we're going to pick is 25 again. So you can see that makes a massive difference. Okay. Once we've done that, we're going to change the levels. So we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Levels. And the values we're going to pick for this one are 99, 1.52, and 227. Okay, and then we're going to think out a colour. Obviously, we can mask all this out afterwards. Um, so, we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. Make sure that we click the Colorize button. to pick a colour for our so it's entirely up to you what, what colour you pick that will be alright ok so now we're going to create a layer mask we're going to make it um, a little bit more effective Take these bits out because they don't look very good. Let's just focus on the edge bits first. And then with a smaller brush, I want to mask out this area, obviously. So it looks like the rings go behind the planet. So 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to sample the colour of the sky just above the horizon. So if we hide these stars for a minute, just pick that. but this time we'll do it through the menu. I'm going to go to layer mask, hide all, and um, we'll put this underneath the horizon. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint in areas of the sky. So we need a big brush for this. shape we're going to have the spacing at 681 because that's going to be quite this is quite a big image and um, size is going to be 88 and we're going to have a jitter on that and um, for the shape dynamics we're going to have a jitter size jitter of 100 percent and um, pen pressure as a control jitter is pointless for this because obviously they're all round um, and on transfer we're going to have an opacity jitter <coughs> of 87% um, I think that should, uh, that should do us ok so what we're going to do layer and we're going to add a Gaussian blur and we're going to give it a value that just brings in a little bit of um, effect around there. We're going to duplicate the original stars layer Um, and we're going 
to turn the fill down to zero, which essentially makes them transparent, but it doesn't make any layer styles transparent. So if we actually went to outer glow and picked let's pick a more of a purple one. Um, this is 75 that's a 49 50 that should be alright it just has a little bit of colour to it so what we're going to do is we are going to rasterize this layer style we are going to merge the stars layers down going to create a layer mask. And obviously we need to mask out any of them which appear over the, something that we don't want over like the planet. Gaussian blur and we're going to make these stars a lot softer and also we're going to change the transparency and the opacity and then at um, just make them a little bit more subtle so once we've got that we can move on to the water reflection so we're going to flatten this image not really sure something you should be doing but for the purposes of this we're okay um, and we're going to change the canvas size to 5000 pixels Is the water image? So we're going to drag this into the main image. We're going to make sure that we have erased parts of it that we don't want so anything that's there and then we're going to edit free transform and make sure that it easily covers the area that we want to mirror and then we're going to put it underneath this layer okay we're going to change the blending mode of this reflected layer to overlay okay and what we should see is we should start to see the reflection come through and now from the uh, miracles of modern technology 
I will show you a version of this that I spent more time on um, and that I've done a few extra uh, parts to it um, for example the mist that you can see uh, between the water and the land that is just a uh, smoke texture um, if you were to google smoke like stock image you tend to get things like um, quite pale smoke on a black background so um, if you put that over your um, image and obviously squashed it and changed the blending mode to screen it will get rid of that black background and it will put it over the top and then just a bit of a layer mask to fade it into the water gives it quite a nice little uh, quite a nice little effect but yeah this is I'll say it's the finished thing it's not the finished thing because you can always do more um, but it's the end of the tutorial